Hello and welcome to an inkdependence.com brief video review and water drop test. I'm your friendly host Mike and today we have Anderson Penn's Robin's Egg Blue. This is a really nice uh, sort of, uh, I don't know, it's kind of like a dark turquoise I suppose. I think of Robin's Egg as being a light blue and some maybe a skosh too light. Uh, more maybe like this actually, it's kind of Robin's Egg but this is actually a pretty nice uh, blue ink. I did have a little bit of an issue with it uh, in this Franklin Kristoff pen, which is this one right here. One of my most reliable pens, but this uh, ink seems to be a little bit persnickety. These are reformulated scribal workshop inks, and I historically have not been a huge fan of those. They've always been a little dry for me, kind of persnickety, and this one's persnickety, but not terrible. Uh, once I got it going in the Franklin Kristoff, it was just fine. Uh, you can see here. Yeah, I can do my little swirly hoobies there with no problems, and uh, down here, this is also the uh, the broad italic, it's a cursive italic it is. And you can see a little bit of sheen there actually, which is interesting, you don't really see that very often. Uh, I didn't see that until just now when I zoomed in, so don't count on seeing a whole lot of sheen, but there is some I suppose. Um, and once you get it going, it's fine, but I do get some hard starts with that one. Now, I wasn't really satisfied with that, so I went ahead and put it in this uh, Delta Unica right here, which is uh, the Anderson Pens Delta Unica. Beautiful pen. I don't know if they still have them or not, but um, if they don't, even if they don't have this red, get a Unica, because these are very good pens. I haven't had any problems with any inks I've been putting in this pen. It is a medium nib. Looks like this. It's a pretty good size nib. It's a big one. And uh, it tends to be a little on the wet side, but it's still very controlled. No problems at all. And it actually will probably start off... Whoa. Let me glare it out. There we go. All right. There you go. I lost a little bit of that first line, but no big deal. Um, this is uh, a good pen, and I haven't had any problems with the ink in this pen. So, um, I think this is the one that uh, uh, Brian and uh, Lisa said was the best out of the two, or the best out of the seven or so that they've got, and they really like this one the best, and they've constantly got it in pens. So I said, you know, it wouldn't be their favorite if it wasn't great. I imagine they kind of have wet pens going. In a wet pen, this is a perfectly good ink. Uh, no real hard starts or problems at all with this one. You can see a little bit of sheen there from the Unica writing as well. Uh, this nib is very round at the tip, so you kind of end up with... Uh, I end up getting these little sort of like curly bits here and that sort of thing when I write with it, which is kind of fun. Uh, I do like that Unica quite a bit. And again here, actually, if you look at the ends, I just noticed, you can see a little bit of sheen there. I'm going to take a picture of that one. There we go. This is still. Uh, that will go on the blog eventually. Uh, you can see a little bit of sheen there, but not so much elsewhere. All right, on to ink comparisons. Here it is next to a few other blues I had sitting on the desk. Robin's Egg there at the top, of course, followed by Schaefer Turquoise. And you can see that those two are actually quite a lot alike. Uh, they're slightly less alike in person. As I said, my phone does not do well with turquoise. Uh, the turquoise is more green in person. Uh, the bright blue from uh, Toucan, which is right there. Toucan's another ink uh, that's sold exclusively by Anderson Pens. I'll have that review up eventually. I've only just started using it, but I do really like this Toucan ink. Uh, so there's that one. Uh, Salix, which I'd kind of forgotten about, and I noticed that my Vanishing Point didn't have any ink in it. and said, well, that's no good. So I put my favorite Vanishing Point ink, that's the Salix. If you have a medium Vanishing Point nib, dude, get some Salix, because it's literally the only ink I've liked in that pen. Um, just that nib is is not my favorite with anything else. Then uh, Levenger Pomegranate, which I got as a sample uh, from a very nice person at the uh, Triangle Pen Club meeting. I don't know if I want, she wants me to out her or not as far as being my source for this ink. She said I couldn't review it until she put hers up on her new blog, which I hope she gets going. She'll know who she is, and she'd better uh, get it going. Anyway, that's it, and check out that gold sheen. Man, you hear people talk about things like the uh, J. Herbon 1670 inks and stuff having a lot of sheen. Uh, or um, uh, Yamadori, that kind of stuff, but man, look at this guy right here. All kinds of sheen up in this pomegranate. And that, I tell you what, is from a really fine nib. It is from this, ooh, I dropped it. Uh, is this from this nib right here, which is in a Rotring core. I'm like the only person that likes cores. I don't have any focus issues today. Come on, phone, let's get, the, let's get this done. There we go, Rotring core. Uh, it has this really very fine nib. And even there, you see the sheen. So uh, I might have to put that in a bigger nib just to see what it does, because it looks kind of awesome. Underneath that diamine salamander, which I just had to go to bottle of, because, man, I really love salamander. It's been in this javelin, this shaver javelin here, for, I don't know, uh, it's safe to say months? And I just can't get, get, I can't get uh, tired of it, really. This is a um, really good nib. I really like this one. It's got a rubberized grip. Anyway, I'm kind of going on tonight. I don't know, maybe, uh, maybe I'm tired. <laughs> and then at the bottom there, Fox River Blues. 
from Anderson Pens again, which is a much darker blue than the Robin's Egg. So if you're in the, in the market for a, a, an ink that's going to behave really well in a big wet nib, get some of this Robin's Egg ink. Let's see what it does when I put some water on it. Oops, forgot to grab a little blotting thing here. All right, super fancy. There we go. Sorry, I had to look at the wood grain. I had to turn around. All right. Here we go. Here comes the water. And you can see quite a lot of blue already coming up. You notice I'm doing this review on the full size, well not full size, with the number 16 dot pads from Rhodia. Uh, I've gone back to this, I'll, I'll, I only have a few sheets left uh, because the uh, smaller ones were really just you know, bleeding through and water was just going through and was crazy. Uh, yeah, there we go. So as expected, not a whole lot of, uh, it just smears right off as soon as it gets touched by anything damp. A lot of it coming off on my handy dandy wiping thing here. And then on the other side, yeah, almost nothing, which is nice. That's kind of what I expect from Rhodia paper. And uh, this one, this number 16 pad, much better. Let's see, where's the chromatography for this one? Here it is, Robin's Egg. Go ahead and look at that right quick. Chromatography, chromatography for this one actually suggested to me that more would stick around than did, although, you know, yeah, no, not much stuck around. I was going to be charitable to it, but it looks like a lot. Oh, cat hair. Looks like a lot of it uh, kind of left. I was expecting more of it to stick around based on this one right here. Uh, you can see this is where it started out, this little blotch right here, and it didn't really travel very far. It, there's some big um, chunks that stuck around down here and a fair amount of dark in the middle, but um, yeah, not a whole lot, uh, not a lot of movement, but on the paper, fair amount of movement. So there you go. All right, this is uh, this has been Anderson Penn's Robin's Egg Blue. Check this out on AndersonPens.com now. They just got the com, and it's not just net. And if you want to see a full review of lots of pictures, go to inkdependence.com. And if you like what I do here at Inkdependence, please go over to patreon.com slash inkdependence to find out how you can help. Peace out, y'all.